Hi there. It is November 1 here in the Philippines, 8 p.m. in the evening. Happy, happy Halloween. I'm going to be having an unpacking of a wild boar fang pendant slash neck knife. We're going to be unpacking a wild boar fang pendant slash neck knife from Karinga province, northern Luzon. Karinga province, where uh, a wild boar fang is called Alingu. Alingu. Kind of sounds like Tingu. It kind of sounds like Tingu, which is the term for Fang here in Bicol. But there at Kalinga, it's called uh, Alingu, wild boar, Babiramo, or in Bicol, it's called Popon. By the way, I'm Jason Chan Coco, I'm your host. Let's have another uh, online tambayan here at Hagbayon Channel. Uh, I am a college professor, writer, rock guitarist, blades builder, researcher, blades researcher, martial arts practitioner, and enthusiast, Cimarron fighting arts researcher, outdoorsman, prepping and survivalism, hobbyist. So there, uh, we're going to be having an unpacking video of a wild boar fang pendant slash neck knife. Uh, it's from Kalinga. And uh, there, uh, they call wild boar as alingu. Alingu blade. Do you like blades? Do you like native apparel? You came to the right place because we're going to be having an unpacking video of said item. Um, you know very well that the Ikalinga and Cordilleran tribes from the north, including the Taosogs from the south are considered as the unconquered tribes, the unconquered uh, territory, unconquered by the colonizers, particularly the Spaniards. Ikalinga, Cordillerans, people of Mindanao, particularly uh, Sulu, Taosog Island, um, are conquered by the Spaniards. As per the Ikalingas, their warriors were called Mingols. Did I pronounce it right? Mingols or Mingols. They were uh, known for being headhunters. They used uh, the bones and skulls of their enemies as adornment for their uh, apparel and as uh, material for their swords and knives. By the way, uh, they call headhunting as kayao. Kayao, that's headhunting. So the Mingols were indulged in kayao or headhunting. And later on, they would use the bones and skulls of their enemies as fashion apparel and as uh, materials for their weapons, etc. And you also use the alingo or the boar fang as necklace. As a matter of fact, when it becomes uh, an heirloom, passed by from one generation to another, 
they call it bongor. Bongor. Now, this particular item is from Uma Lubuagan. Lubuagan. From Uma Lubuagan. Made by a, a tribesman named Joel or Ka Joel from Kalinga. A beneficiary of uh, the DSWD Sustainable Livelihood Program and Livelihood Assistance Grant being that uh, the industry where he is uh, involved got pretty much affected by COVID-19 pandemic, especially due to travel restrictions, thereby causing uh, difficulties in uh, shipping, uh, blades products, and in gathering materials for blades building. So kudos to DSWD and uh, may you also help uh, Bicolano blacksmiths and craftsmen. So let's start doing the unpacking. We'll be using the Victorinox climber that, that I always use. item came from our friend uh, Chris Reshon Guiral. Chris Reshon Guiral, thank you, Chris. Is uh, from Kalinga, uh, Bulanao, Tabuk City. Right. Now, Chris here is uh, with the DSWD. All right, let's begin. Check out the um, the pair of scissors that is also installed here in my Victorinox ship via LBC. Uh, it was shipped Thursday, and it arrived today, November one. So it took uh, LBC how many days? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four days. Four days. We're now opening it. We're now unpacking. Unpacking using my Victorinox climber. Unpacking. Victorinox is very useful to me, it's very sharp. It's great. So item partly covered with some kind of a paper. Microwavable, <laughs> microwave oven safe. So nicely packaged. Done. Oh, I broke it. Now, uh, ta-da, here's our Alingo blade. Alingo blade. Oops. With a nice, uh, Native uh, lace, according to Chris, uh, the makers decided to include some accessories such as 
we have this one looks like Let's use, the, let's use the lights. Yes, accessories. You can wear it like this. Very Kalinga, the lace and uh, it locks into place because of this one. A wild boar uh, fang is this one. Let's open it. Let's open with this and chief the the sheath is well. There's a way to this works as a kind of a lock, so it won't just open. So I think we have to yeah, get it that way. So it's quite small, but. Works apart, and uh, the blade or the edge is on the other side, on this side, on this side, and not here, but this side. All right. The edge is on this side, and not this side. On this side, I think it's sharp enough. Not expecting this to be super sharp, but maybe it's sharp enough. It's not super sharp, but I'll just sharpen this later. cuts but you can just polish it and sharpen it later wild boar fan and it has a wooden uh, sheath Lock it by tightening this part. So tighten it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's tight, it won't open easy. It won't get unsheathed easy. Nice neck knife when you're hiking. Easily accessible because it is. Here. Huh? So more stuff here, paper, biodegradable, throw it away. This one you can reuse this for some other purpose. We can also use this for some other purpose. All right. Mm 
wild boar fang difficult to find yeah very quiet quite rare serves the park you know it can serve as nice you know a paddle for FMA practitioners, um, nativists. If you want to have something like this, you, wanna, you might want to check the profile of Chris Giral of DSWD. Chris is spelled as C R I S G, uh, Giral is spelled as G U I R A L. Chris Graal of DSWT. A lingo blade. A lingo blade from uh, Kalinga. A lingo means wild boar or babayamo or om. This is a uh, memento from our pre Hispanic past, being that uh, the Kalinga and the Cordilleran tribes were largely unconquered by the Spaniards. Well, mainly because of the ming Mingles or the warriors of the Kalinga tribes. But you know, uh, they are peace-loving people. But uh, of course, they, they have warrior culture, especially in headhunting or kayao in bones and skulls of the enemy are used as uh, fashion statement <laughs> or as material for their swords and knives and other weapons and uh, it gives them you know feel or air of invisibility Wild boar fangs. Now uh, they also use it. They also use it as a necklace. And in fact, when it becomes heirloom, as it is passed on from one generation. Now wild boar fangs are necklaces. They use wild boar fangs as necklaces. And when it's it gets passed from one generation to another, you know, call it bongol. Heirloom. Now this one is made in Uma Lubuagan by Ka Joel, a DSWD Sustainable Life Program and Livelihood Assistant Grant uh, Beneficiary. So we got this via Chris Graal, DSWD. Kindly post comment down below. Nicely done. Nicely done. Now let's look at my other collections. Now it will now join my other stuff. Oh, this one, like this one. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps uh, um, this one. Wild boar fang. Snake bone, etc. Let's put it beside each other. like this one from my friend Eldridge. Oh, let's remove my glasses first. Mm -hmm. See? It's 
leg bone. Now this wild boar fang is huge. This one I, I still have to remove the lace. But it's 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 huge and I think I should also make this into this kind of the you see almost of the same size as this one here. I have an idea. Why don't I send this to them and they can make it into this one as well? Nice. This one is a lot bigger for Did you see the knife? Let's check it out again. serves as luck. Joining my other collection. Snake bone and then Bullet pendants like this one, machine gun slug, World War II machine gun slug. Only the slug, not a complete bullet. Again, thanks, Chris. Girl, Chris Girl of DSWD for you know including this uh, lace and some adornments and some uh, other accessories. All right, this has been Jason of Agbayon channel. This channel is devoted to current events, literature, rock music, music in general, outdoors, blade sculpture, trapping and survivalism. It's a useful hobby. Remember the pen is mightier with the sword. See you next time.